Hello and welcome to the first episode of The Real Music Show. My name is Dan Rowe and I'm the founder of Real Music and the host of The Real Music Show. Our mission is to unite music lovers and artists with passionate creators across the UK. The Real Music Show brings you closer to the artists and creators you love with some exclusive live performances. Today I am joined by a very special guest who I'm fortunate to share a band with. Please let me welcome to the show George Wilding. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Cheers, man. <laughs> Cheers for having no me. No problem. Great well, to have you. Thanks for saying that you're fortunate to be in a band with me as well. <laughs> I feel like my ego is inflating by the second. <laughs> and ignore the sunglasses. I'm just, I'm pretty hungover. It's the rock star look, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We're going with it as like a proper look, but it's, um, <laughs> just don't want to see my eyes. Right cool. <laughs> um, so I'll get right into some of the questions and we're just going to have a general chat about yeah. your background some influences on you and also what is in store for the future. Cool. So let's get right into it. How long have you been playing music? Uh, I just turned 24, which means uh, which means about 12 years. I, th- wow. I picked up a guitar when I was about 11 or 12, I think. Yeah, yeah. By accident. It was my brother's guitar. I don't think he wanted me to have it. <laughs> but I kept it. <laughs> How long did you keep that that guitar for? That Out was it was one of those old you know, every house has one, like a, a classical a like nylon string guitar, <laughs> one of those. One of those and I like he actually had guitar lessons and wanted to get into it and I realised I'd just get a lot more attention if if it, if I was the one holding the guitar, so that was where that stems from. <laughs> so it all comes from the attention. Absolutely, absolutely. And a wise man once told me actually that, man, if anyone, if there's like a reason to, there's a reason that people learn guitars, man. It's because girls like guitars, you know. <laughs> like girls think guitars are fucking cool, man. Like everyone <laughs> would learn fucking piano if it if you looked as good when you play piano. <laughs> so. You mentioned a little bit about this already, but who have kind of been like your biggest influences? So who, what artists do you think have had the most kind of impact on you as a musician? Yeah, yeah, I've been thinking about this one. And you know, something that like really sticks out is, you know, like people always, um, people say they remember where they were when JFK was shot or when 9-11 happened or something. I remember like, I remember the first time I heard the Beatles. <laughs> like that that's the equivalent for me it's like it's like yeah yeah the first time that that clicked and it's like wow that's ah oh, okay that's like that's taken me somewhere else that's like that's what I love and I remember the first time as well I've heard my favourite ever song is um, River by Joni Mitchell and I remember exactly where I was like when I first heard it you know um, so those are the moments those are the moments for me that like properly probably inspired me to to know. I remember like not so much of an inspiration as well, but someone like Jake Bug hearing like that he just brought an out, out an album and it's basically like him playing guitar and then someone on drums and it was like, Oh shit, man, I can do that actually. I, I could do that. <laughs> you know, like, um yeah, yeah. So there's um a mixture of the two of what you would like aspire to aspire to be and what you feel that you're like capable of, I suppose. But yeah, yeah, the Beatles, Elliot Smith. I can't stop playing Elliot Smith records <laughs> at the moment as well. Just constantly, constantly. And now I've got all the vinyls as well. So that is like every night for me, I go to sleep with my head pressed up against the speaker of a record player, just playing like Exile or Figure Eight or, or one of his albums. Yeah. Do yeah. you find you often like return to a lot of your favourite music and play it over and over again? Or are you constantly oh, listening to sort of new things yeah well I've actually you being in a band with you <laughs> and Perry and James has like opened my eyes so much to a lot of new music but I'm quite guilty of um, of finding something I like and then that's yeah, like you're sticking to that yeah like I discovered the Beatles and you know I listened to the Beatles for like three years that's it that was that was fucking it man. That's like, <laughs> I don't need anything else man I got the Beatles like what more could you I mean you have want? covered most things with the Beatles yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing as well I listen to stuff now and I'm like ah oh, man yeah that's cool Tame Impala yeah yeah cool they're, they're all right they're all right but you know the Beatles did that like 60 years ago and like yeah that's still just Sorry, I think you've asked me like three questions so far and the answer to everyone has been, oh, the Beatles, yeah, the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So, yeah. without saying the Beatles, <laughs> how would you describe your music and style? <laughs> uh, sporadic. <laughs> sort of, uh, I mean, the fact you've got the curtains closed and I'm still wearing sunglasses makes me look like a bit of a dick, doesn't it? <laughs> I think I have probably summed myself up. Uh, what was I? I, t- I spoke to... Uh, I spoke to Perry on the phone last night, and we described the best uh, the best way to describe our music was uh, extreme highs and extreme lows. <laughs> so I'm going I'm going with that. Like fuck any genre or any of that. It's just we're gonna say extreme highs and extreme lows, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. To be fair, um, talk me through like how you learned guitar, and did you take any singing lessons, or how did you kind of get to the level and ability yeah, that you're at now? I Ah, level of ability. <laughs> wow, man. Um, wow. So I, I, I used to sing. My best mate at the t- uh, oh, my best mate um, still now really is um, like great at eight piano. Can just pick up instruments and learn them, and like he 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 just gets it. He's just got like music in his blood, basically. And I remember I used to, I used to say, and I used to, yeah, he used to take the piss, and that's the best. That's the best, the best way you can learn, really, isn't it? It's like uh, having someone be properly. He was probably the only person <laughs> who would have been properly honest with me. Yeah. Uh, to say like, you know, like Matt, yeah, you sing, you sing like an octave down from where <laughs> you should be singing. I used to sing like it sounded like George Ezra, but not actually at the same pitch it was like genuinely that low sounded fucking stupid and i never got it i carried on because i was quite a proud kid and foolhardy and an idiot um and then my gran got me this um tape recorder um like proper old uh yeah just a blank tape and an old tape recorder that she used to i think she used to send her off old like family messages over to the states <laughs> over to to my family out there um, but she was like, oh, it's important that you, the only way you're going to get better is you need to be able to hear yourself. I think that's important. I think mm. that was really like well, a well thought out way of telling me like, you need to get better. Because <laughs> I, I used to come up with all these songs like, yeah, and, uh, and be like, yeah, I, I feel like this is all I do. This is all I want to do. Uh, but I think I'm shit at it. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, they get practicing. There were a lot of late nights. <laughs> that that brings you on nicely, actually, in terms of if you weren't doing music, what else would you be doing? Like, did you have any other dreams or aspirations other than music? Yeah, mate. Honestly, it was. Um, I don't know. I never. There was never a job that I thought. I think I like went through the phase of when you're a kid, you want to dig a hole in the garden. <laughs> and then my next phase was, yeah, I'm going to, I think I'm think i going to get a fur coat, man, because I want to be a fucking rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was it. I literally think that was it. There was, yeah, there was nothing else. I discovered a way, I, I, I probably always hummed to myself or sang like as, as, a, as a small child and then... I found this guitar and it's like, oh, there's this way that I can get all of this stuff out of me. Mm. And that is all I, all I ever wanted, really. I remember actually a, a teacher who I sort of vaguely stayed in touch with telling me, uh, once I left school, he told me that he, he was in charge of... Mr Harrison, an art teacher, he, he was in charge of careers, meetings, trying to get kids to... To, you know, say what say what you want to do when you mm. leave school, and he said he took me out of the room, and I said, "Man, I, it doesn't matter because I, I, I I'm just going to be a rock star." And he said he was just like <laughs> he didn't know what to fucking say. He was like, "So I said, so I looked at you for a moment and sort of evaluated my options and said, uh, fair enough." And sent you back into class. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> well, at least you could argue that's supportive. I mean, yeah, he was really supportive. But bless his heart for for doing that, really, because you know, it was lovely. Yeah, a, a lovely thing to do. Yeah, yeah. That's what teachers should be, right? Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. Like just push you in the right direction, but not kind of force you into one way of doing things or thinking. I think yeah, like, sometimes that's the issue. Um, 
because especially as an artist you want to be able to kind of do what you want to an extent and express yeah. yourself I think that's the beauty of it absolutely and having that support and that backing to go yeah go and do what makes you happy man rather than what makes you money <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say is the best gig you've ever played and also to compare it what has been your worst yeah that's uh okay so even if it's so, not the very best, think of maybe one that you remember being really good and one that you remember being not yeah, so good. <laughs> yeah, do you know, I do, so I do, um, I do gigs, I, I did a run of gigs, a run of six gigs supporting a band called TCNI. Right, okay. Which is um, XTC, yeah. um, what they've morphed into now, and... Um, and that was really cool. That was at Swindon Arts Centre, and um, it was, so it's like 200 capacity <coughs> venue, and it sold out. I think in like 40 minutes they did six dates. They had to add extra dates onto it, and I came out every night and just opened. And that in and that was the the best thing because it was music lovers. It's a proper if you like XTC, you're probably mm. into your music. It's like quite a cult following sort of thing. So it was real people who were into it. And I got so much kudos for being there and just it's like, man, you know XTC, oh, that's cool. And I remember walking out of like the dressing room and stuff and there were fans queuing up to get autographs and shit. And that was and it was really cool and everything about that and I met so many beautiful, lovely people who had just loved music and knew about Elliot Smith and like <laughs> knew about all of this fucking obscure like oh man, you've heard of the teardrop explodes and like all of that. Yeah, like, yeah, man, man, that's that's so cool, that's so cool. And then but the flip side of it was I think they'd been broken up as a band for like 36 years or right, something okay. ridiculous. So equally <clears throat> there was this guy walking out with a guitar like, I know you've waited 36 years to see this band that you have a cult following for and you've been uh, dying to see for this amount of time. Mm. Just give me 10 minutes. I'm going to play you like three songs and then I'll be <laughs> gone. <laughs> All right. yeah. I remember saying, like, I, I, I walked out the first night I said... I know you've been waiting a while to see TCNI, but I'm going to play a few songs. And I think a guy literally shouted out at the audience, 36 years, mate! I've been waiting 36 years! <laughs> wow, that's that's dedication, right? Yeah, but they were a beautiful set of fans, and now, like, being in that, like, circle of people is really, really cool. So you could class that as the best and worst at the same time. It was probably the worst for them and the best for me. That's, that's <laughs> nice, is, I like which that. Which is a strange mix. And yeah. So, like, you talked a bit about like super fans a bit there like have you had any fans give you any compliments that you remember really well like have they ever said anything oh, that you think no. wow like that was really nice to hear do you know what when when you when you start doing it i think there's that old cliche of you could be playing to a room full of people who love it yeah and there's one person at the bar who's just like phone staring you out or like deliberately ignoring <laughs> you or shouting all over it or you know saying shit and that's the stuff that sticks with you yeah, I don't really get that anymore. I've developed like a <laughs> shell, like this exterior to it. So, um, yeah, I do like remember that there's, uh, uh, and, and most people are just generous and beautiful and lovely anyway. But I remember going to a, I played at 2000 Trees Festival. and I love 2000 Trees. <clears throat> yeah, man, a great festival. It was really, really cool. Really cool. Yeah, actually, let's do a shout out for Two Thousand Trees because it was—it's <laughs> one of those like grassroots, but like quite big at the same time, um, and it's just got everything there you'd want. Probably quite Glastonbury-ish, but a smaller scale sort of thing. Um, and I played—I only played a small set. I think I opened like a stage on the Sunday or something. So mm. just or like, I spent the whole festival just trying not to get too fucking hungover, basically. <laughs> but, but I remember walking around it was my my girlfriend at the time and a load of her mates came bless them so it was me um and just like i don't know like five girls just wandering around the <laughs> thing and then i just heard like a shout from the distance like oh fuck it's him it's it's him it's him it's really him and i, I told her, <laughs> no way was that for me that it was the that coolest is, moment that is cool. and these like three people walked up like probably like probably like my age as well like a bit maybe like a couple of years younger 
And they were going, man, we came to the festival because we heard you were playing. And I only no had this time. I had like a half hour slot on the Sunday or something. They were like, man, we love that song Elephant Man that you do. We've been like listening to you. Wow. We came, you, we saw you were on the bill and we were like, yeah, fuck, then we'd go to 2003. And so the fact that I was recognised... Yes. And like, and they liked it, and it was like these are people I've never met. Just meant like, it meant the fucking world, man. That was like, oh, I'm actually, I'm doing something right. This is like, it's it's fine if it's just for me. It's completely fine if it's just for me because it's all I want to do. But the fact that other people appreciated it to that degree meant a hell of a lot. And the fact that there were five attractive girls there <laughs> watching it happen, like it's like, yeah, I'll sign there. <laughs> that was a good moment. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That. And that's yeah, that's cool. what it's all about. At the end of the day. Okay, so that leads us on to our first performance. Cool. So yeah. This is actually George's latest single, Postcards from a Motorway, which has just hit 12k streams in a week on Spotify. Mate, yeah. How do you feel about that? Over the moon with it. I just got the little review um, back and it was like, yeah, weekly review. It's on 12 playlists and yeah, like yeah, like 12,000 12, streams, which is the fastest as ever a song's ever gone up for me before. So... Hopefully we're moving in the right direction. <laughs> great, no, that's great. So um, yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about the song, just briefly, before you play it? Absolutely, yeah. So it's uh, the most depressing song I've ever written. It was, weirdly, I always I always reckon there's stuff in the air, like, um, it's almost like you're catching the songs with a net, like, they don't... I, I've never sat down to write a song, I pick up a guitar and a song comes out. And this one, it was just, I was like, <clears throat> man, that's really fucking sad and actually probably quite an accurate reflection of the world and then later that day uh, I broke up with my long term girlfriend and I was like ah oh, man I'm right I can predict the fucking future there are vibrations in the air <laughs> that is where these songs come from so it's really sad there's a line in it about the president which I get quite a lot of comments about um, and everyone assumes it's Donald Trump uh, but it is just any president a corrupt president um, but I think it, it probably rings quite true at the moment and um, it's probably been quite a good plug for the song that it's like every time Donald Trump does something fucking stupid I'm like oh yeah <laughs> some more people like might listen to the song now <laughs> so he's, he's done me a favour there okay brilliant okay let's hear it let's take it away Good. 
go about the dirty business Sucking Tim's the fat and thin alike Who gave you the only answers? Let's go on strike about a strike for nothing in the end the ground which we depend upon The opinion of the day And push cars from the motorway Now the cat has got your tongue And the man sucked up your money Who can blame those on the I'd have thought I'd make you stay Or even stick around a day or two I just always have and always will be asleep and I won't be long to bed taking off for good I'll plan my great escape and blow it